Hi you guys, this is Life Support and I am back to encourage you guys with some information on self-healing. I hope everyone is doing well. So self-healing involves self-reflection, it involves self-awareness, and it involves self-care. It also involves boundaries. Boundaries are very important to self-heal. You have to set boundaries with your family. You have to set boundaries with people, period, to give yourself a lot of me time. Self-healing requires a lot of me time. And before I get into what I need to share with you, it's very important to make sure that you are healed from inner childhood wounds. You would be amazed at the results that you get with self-healing, how you are able to spot a narcissist, how your tolerance will be zero for a narcissist once you self-reflect and begin to heal those inner childhood wounds. I had to um, deal with a situation. These situations are not easy to deal with. Number one, they're not easy to deal with because they involve family members. They involve people that are close to us, that have been around us our whole entire life. And for the sake of being loyal to family, sometimes we walk around with silencers over our mouths. And... I want you guys to know how important it is. Your loyalty is not to anybody or anyone that causes you to suffer. If you're suffering for the sake of, oh, but that's my family or, oh, that's my mom or, oh, that's my daddy. Then nine times out of ten, you will just tolerate toxic situations, toxic relationships, toxic um toxic energy you'll feel that you have um, the need to tolerate this you'll develop a tolerance for it that's what I had done over the years as a child I promise you though once I confronted and it wasn't even as hard I didn't even plan it you guys I'll be honest with you it came unannounced and I'm so glad that when it came, usually I'm passive with situations. I don't speak up for myself. You know, we, we feel like, oh, we got to give you a pass just to be accepted or I'm not going to say anything. We were always, we weren't too much raised that way, but we, I grew up in a household um, that pretty much would happen in the house. You know, we're going to, we're going to solve it. We'll, we'll resolve it, you know, um. A lot of things swept under the rug you know and then it's hard to go back and heal but don't worry about being rejected you know what happened I know what happened to me I don't need nobody's validation I don't need their apology I don't need no explanation I'm just gonna tell you how I felt and like I said it wasn't planned it came unannounced so when I rose up to defend myself and that's another thing that made me mad I was like well I was a child when all this stuff happened to me why why am I feeling like a child now why am I still feeling like a helpless do you know once I spoke out once I broke code and spoke up for myself all of the narcissistic relationships all of them they were like from family members, extended family members, to co-workers, to friends. I didn't care about rejection. I didn't care about I didn't care about anything. I just needed to get it off my chest. And once I got it off my chest with my dad, it was a cakewalk. You guys would be surprised. Instantly, the relationship that I was in, instantly. 
I was like this whole, I was surprised at myself. I knew I had the strength in me. I knew I had the courage. But what was keeping me shackled and keeping a silencer over me is that I still needed to confront my inner childhood wounds. Once I did that, the bad relationship that I was in, I was like, he would say stuff to me and I would be like, do I hear a ghost? Who's talking? Like, it was, it was just like, everything was cut off. Everything was cut off. I would be like, you still here? Like, I didn't tell you we was moving on this date. I don't know what to tell you. I can't continue to give piggyback rides. Then I had to self-reflect and ask myself and be so real and so honest. Why? What made me continue to still have a common ground for these people? Because we attract them. And you guys don't believe opposites attract. If you're empathic, if you have a heart and passion for people, if you have love in your heart, that's the type of relationship that you should be attracted to. And it should be real. I was allowing smoke screens. I was actually putting up smoke screens. Yep. I was putting up the smoke screens. I was in addiction. Didn't want to see. Um, played the victim for so long. Oh, I was. Um, I'm a, a victim of domestic violence. I had to ask myself, well, when are you going to choose to be a victor? When are you going to choose to stop entertaining these relationships and self reflect so that you can speak out? So that you can help women get to the next level of where they need to be. Men and women. Men and women. Because men or a man or a woman can be a victim of domestic violence. They could be a victim of these relationships. So um, that's why I do what I do. Um, and so how you self-heal. Like I said, you have to self-reflect. You have to ask yourself... These people are flatterers. If they know that you suffer from being overweight, they will make sure when you go out that you are the life of the party. They will make sure that they're putting all their attention so the world can see, oh, this is my boo or this, that. As soon as they drop you off, before they even get to the stop sign, they on their phone dialing to go on their next journey of manipulation to get whatever it is that they need. So ask yourself, what are you allowing? Is this person giving you money? Are you addicted to their love bombing? Um, are you using, it's something. It is something that you need to get rid of within yourself that's allowing you to still be a victim of these people. Self-healing involves self-reflection and self-awareness. Don't use your downtime. If you have downtime, don't use it obsessing over them or the past. Maybe you've gotten out of the relationship. Maybe you don't know what to do. It is hard. You don't know. I didn't know what to do. But guess what? Enjoy being by yourself. Because here's the thing. Would you rather be by yourself and have your mental health and have your mental wealth? Mental health is mental wealth. Would you rather be by yourself, walking alongside a beach, be by yourself, sitting down somewhere, eating a quiet, peaceful lunch or brunch, be by yourself, writing your first book, be by yourself, um, making a healthy meal with a peace of mind? Would you rather be by yourself or would you rather be with this phantom that only mimics back what you say? They just, they're just mirroring you and we can visibly see them with our eyes. But if you can be honest, other things that you see in them, it's like a horror movie. What are you giving in exchange for that? Is it uh, denial of yourself? It could even be self-hate. But you have to self-reflect to get to the core of the problem so you can begin to self-heal. 
If not, it leads to depression when you obsess over these people. Use your downtime wisely. If you have gifts, use them to help other people. That's why I do my videos on my channel. And that's why I'm more than willing to make videos and so Chris can post them. Because more people are able to see this. Um, make sure you know where your loyalty should be. Your loyalty should always be to you. Children. When there are children involved in these situations, be aware that what your children are going to mimic what they see you do. What they see you go through. That's how they learn. They're like sponges soaking up stuff. So if they see you going through arguing and, you know, one minute you're arguing with this person. The next minute you guys are cupcaking all lovey-dovey. You guys taking the children out. And they're going to put together that that's how a relationship is supposed to be. You have to think about your children, your grandchildren. You can't allow yourself to be in this, continue to be in this selfish place because you don't want to self reflect. You don't want to confront your inner childhood wounds. My self healing consists of it's so peaceful, you guys. It's so peaceful. I take walks with my daughter, she'd be on her scooter, I just be walking. I exercise. I've, I've always loved to cook. So I'm always looking up recipes that, you know, are healthier than what I was eating before. I'm studying. I, I'm, I'm researching information. I would have never been able to do this had I still been babysitting somebody that just want to be around to keep you down. It's time to be free. It's time to be unhandcuffed. Let them do their own time. Do your time happy, peaceful, learning, helping others. That's what that's what we're here for, to help each other get out of this. You'll never be able to help people effectively if you are you are allowing yourself to still be in these relationships. So I hope that was able to help somebody. Self-healing involves self-reflection, self-awareness, self-care, and definitely boundaries. Until next time, breathe easy, take care, and have a blessed one.